Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a remote OPC UA server to a Visual Components 4.0 product. In this case, I'm using Visual Components Premium and my server is hosted on a virtual machine. To get started, go ahead and turn on the connectivity feature in your Visual Components product. I'll go to the File tab to go Backstage, click Options, click Add-on, and then here's the connectivity feature so when you turn it on or off you have to restart the application so I'll click enable to turn it on click OK to save the change and then exit the application go back to my Windows toolbar and restart Visual Components Premium okay the application has been restarted and we can see above the ribbon there's a tab called connectivity go ahead and click this tab and this displays controls for setting up a new OPC UA connection so if you go to the connectivity configuration panel click OPC UA, go to the server group, and then click Add Server. So this creates a new connection, which you can configure. So by default it's called Server, but you can rename that. And you have two variable groups for you know reading and writing values from your simulation in the 3D world to your server. Now in the Edit Connection task pane, this is where you set up the connections. So you can use a discovery service on your local network to find a OPC server, or you could just type in the address here. Now for this tutorial I'm not going to be using any certificate or password or username to log on to the server so we're just going to keep things simple. Let's now set up our OPC server. So I'll go to my virtual machine. In this case I'm using a Windows 7 virtual machine and the type of platform or software I'm using is called CodeSys. So I'll go ahead and open this up. Now what you can do, you can go ahead and set up your own OPC UA server and then just skip ahead to the timecode shown in the video description or in the video right now. But if you want to walk through with me Let's go and create a new project in CodeSys. So I'll click New Project, and we're going to be using a standard PLC project. And we're going to be doing the type of project we did in a previous video where we set up a sensor conveyor project. So I'll name this Sensor Conveyor. Click OK. And I'm going to be using structured text to set up the program. So I'll click OK. And in the Devices pane, we can see here's our program. So let's double click this. And let's now create a very simple program in some local variables. So we want to know when a part is at a sensor. So I'll say part at sensor. Its type is going to be Boolean. We then want to count how many parts reach that sensor. So its type will be integer. We're then going to start or stop the path of a conveyor. So we'll say path start. That's going to be a Boolean value. Then we'll say we want to run a process. So we'll say process part. That'll be a trigger. And then when we execute that trigger, we're then going to have a delay or some type of timer. So we'll say process time, and its type will be of TON or a timer. Let's now write our logic here. So let's first set up our timer. So I'll say process time, and its input, the thing that will trigger our timer, will be that process part when it's true. And we're going to run our timer for five seconds. So I'll use capital T, a hash mark, or pound sign five seconds and now let's say if there is a part at the sensor and the path is turned on or the path has started is equal to true then we're going to increment the pound cart variable so we'll get its current value and then increment it by one and then we'll go ahead and turn the path off so path start We'll set that to be false. And then let's go ahead and process the part. So we'll set that variable to be true. Else, let's say that the path is not turned on and there's nothing at the sensor. So we'll say else if there's not a part at the sensor and the path is turned off, so path start equals false. Then what do we want to do? Well, we want to turn the path on so a part reaches the sensor. So we'll say path start. We'll set that to be true. We're not done yet. So after our timer executes at five seconds, we'll say if process time dot Q. So this will be true when the timer is done. Then let's go ahead and set process part to be false. Let's go ahead and turn, actually, let's actually set our sensor back to false so we can then execute another process. So part at sensor. 
equals false. So to make things compatible with OPC UA, let's go and add a simple configuration for these variables we created here. So in the application, I'll right click, then click Add Object, and we're going to add a simple configuration. And we're going to include the comments in XML. And notice we're going to check this box here to support OPC UA features. I'll click Add. And I probably have to do a build. Yes, I do. So I'll click here. And I have to choose what variables in my PLC program to include. So I will select this checkbox here to select all of them. And now, I'll go ahead and go down to my Windows toolbar, or taskbar, sorry. I'll click this arrow here. And for this code sys control, I'll right click and I'm going to start the PLC. And now, I'll go to the online menu here and I can log on to it. I'll click yes. And we establish the connection, so let's go ahead and start it. So in the debug menu, it hasn't indicated that yet, but let's actually check. It might already be running. And it's not running yet, so let's go back to log on again. Click OK. And there we go. Yep. So now let's go ahead and start it. And now we have a running PLC and an OPC server. And we'll use that server to connect and execute the logic for our PLC here. So I already know the IP address of my virtual machine. So I'll go back to my visual components product. And let's expand, the, actually unpin these panels here. And for the connection, I'll go ahead and type it. And you have to use this prefix called OPC dot full stop or period TCP colon forward slash forward slash and then give the address so it's my local network so 192 168 100 141 and if I now test the connection to make sure I can connect the software to this OPC server and PLC notice that the connection did succeed I can't connect it so I'll click OK and then click apply to establish that connection so right now the connection is actually turned off so that's why this connected property is set to false but let's actually go to the connectivity configuration panel and for that connection we created let's go ahead and click this button here to connect to it and notice its state here connected is now true let's rename this to be our code sys plc there we go so now when we go back to that connectivity configuration panel we can see it's kind of clear what that connection is Let's now build a simple layout in the 3D world that we can then map to the variables in our PLC. So let's actually unpin this panel here too. Go back to our home tab. And in our e-catalog panel under models by type, click feeders. Let's add a basic feeder to the 3D world. Let's now add and connect a sensor conveyor to this feeder. So in models by type, I will expand conveyors. Click visual components. And I'll do a search of sensor. And we found one item called sensor conveyor, so let's add this to the 3D world. And zoom out. And now use the PMP command to plug the sensor conveyor into the feeder. So let's actually unpin this panel too. And now, if I run the simulation, the feeder creates parts, and those parts move along the path of the conveyor. And when they reach the sensor, I want the PLC to stop the path, run a process for five seconds, and then turn the path back on. Let's see how that works. So let's reset. Go back to the connectivity tab, and then in the connectivity configuration panel, we first need to map variables in our simulation to the server, so the server knows when this sensor is triggered by a component. So I'll select that variable group here, simulation to server. You can see right now it's turned on. I'll right click, and then click add variables to create a pairing. So let's actually pair these signals in the components. So I will clear out these filters, but leave the signals checkbox selected. And we have the sensor conveyor has two signals, so start, stop, and sensor boolean signal. So we want this sensor boolean signal to be mapped to a variable in our device. And notice we're searching, searching, searching. And there's our programs. Now if you want to speed this up, you can use this filter here to search. So we're looking for the part at sensor. There we go. We can see it right here. So I have this item in the simulation, this variable selected, and this variable in our PLC or server selected, and I'm now going to pair them by clicking this button called Pair Selected. So now these two are mapped together. 
let's now exit out of this. And now we want the server to write variables in our simulation. So I'll select this variable group here, server to simulation. It is turned on. I'll right click and then click add variables. And now we want to map this start stop signal for controlling the conveyor's path to, let's see, our path starts signal. So let's use that search again. I'll type in path. There we go. So we found the variable. Let's now pair them. And so far so good. Let's now test the connection between variables in our simulation to variables in our server and how this PLC program can control components during a simulation. Let's start by going to the connected variables panel and I'll pin this so we can always see it. And for our first variable group, the simulation to server, notice we have this simulation variable, so it's the component name, a daughter period, followed by the behavior name, that boolean signal, is mapped to this variable in the server. And for our server to simulation variable group, we have this pairing here. So it's the component name, once again, that period or full stop, and the behavior name. And it's mapped to this variable in the server. And both of these are type boolean. So if we run the simulation, what we expect to happen is that that part should stop at the sensor. And it does, great. And after five seconds, the path should be turned back on. And the part should move, and it does, great. So if we actually go down here to our connected variables panel, you can see the value of those variables being changed. So notice the start stops variable was set to true, but now it's false because the path is stopped. And after five seconds, it turns it back on. Let's go now to our PLC program so we can see our part count. Right now it's at four. And it increments up to five, great. Now one thing to mention about these variable groups, you can turn them on and off during a simulation. So if I go to the properties panel here, Let's actually first go to our connectivity configuration and select this simulation to server variable group. And in the properties for that group, we can see here it has this enabled property. So right now it's turned on, so this checkbox is selected. But let's see what happens when I turn this off. Notice that the parts in the 3D world, you know, they're no longer stopping at the sensor because our PLC program is not getting any new input. It still says that the part at sensor variable is false. So let's actually turn that variable group back on. So I'll select here first in this panel, go to the properties group, I'll then select the enable checkbox, and now that part should stop at the sensor, and it does, that's that magic I'm talking about. And after the timer executes, it then turns the path back on. Great. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.